lecture myself, I'm quite inspired at, by hearing other people's experiences of navigating at the academy. Uh, and I've had the great pleasure uh, of getting to work with our next speaker, Pamela Jane Smith, in many capacities. But she's been somebody who's inspired my interest in the history of, um, of archaeology. And that history helps to shape, I think, who I am today at learning from other people that have push the boundaries on the nature of the discipline who have had major impacts on teaching and research and administration, as John Evans has, has had. And Pamela is, has created a, a cultivated, I should say, a group of us and who are all sitting in the same room as Pamela, <laughs> Mara and Gabe, um, uh, where we have focused quite, quite intently on the on the history of the discipline. And as part of that research, Pamela has often gone out and done um, oral historical work recording um, the life histories, the personal histories of different um, archaeologists, some very well known and some not known at all, but who had a very profound impact on the nature of practice. And Pamela was involved in uh, interviewing Evans, I believe, as part of your PhD research. Um, but it went on um, to having Stuart Laidlaw um, film uh, John Evans a couple of years ago. So that was the film that, that I showed at the beginning. And um, Pamela, I think, guided much of the work that, that Stuart did in filming there in terms of the questions and that. So I wanted to introduce you to Pamela, who's going to speak a little bit about documenting Evans's history and goes off uh, with some interesting anecdotes, I think, about his time as an undergraduate. So thank you so much, Pamela. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I only have permission from John Evans to distribute one interview. Actually, it was one I did in 2000. I started interviewing him in 1997. But I do have the full transcription of the 2000 interview, which I have here, if you'd like to have a copy. When I first started my work in 1993, as an oral historian, people would often say to me, well, there's gentlemen and there's cats. And I would say, what's a gentleman? And they would say, well, it's an archaeologist who isn't a cat. And I'd say, what's a cat? And they would say, it was a gentleman. And I remember my husband said to me that his mother used to tell him, my husband is a psychiatrist, and his mother used to tell him, Thurston never be a cat. And I always wondered what that was, and then I met John. You know, I met this man who was a true gentleman, and then I began to realize that what a gentleman is is not just a grand archaeologist, but also a truly uh, a man who looks for the negotiated solution. We would talk about that. I would talk about how he navigated through his life. And it was through judiciousness and through understanding all points of view and through understanding how to negotiate, how to bring everyone on board, how to try to get everyone involved in the decision. And I think when he finally came to be an administrator primarily, and I think one of the reasons, in my own view as an historian, I think one of the reasons he was and everything he did as an administrator was precisely because he was always going out and talking to people and always trying to find out, always open to the idea that somebody might know more and that he could come to a judicious communal decision and move the institute through these very difficult times. I'd like to say just one aside about his wife because during all the interviews I had, even when we were there, and quite often John would say, we need and once I interrupted, I said, who's Eve? And it was Eve. It was Eve and John. And that reminded me very much of, of Graham Clark when I spoke to him. And he would turn to Molly. And Molly White was there about dating Clark. And they would talk about everything together and, and everything, everything together. And Eve and John, I think, did that. I'm not sure. I'm sure Jesus can, can tell us more. But I did want to say something about Newfoundland just because it was so unusual to get an education in her You know, during the interview, she would say to me, there wasn't at that stage any possibility of going to university. Girls didn't go to university. And she was among the first people to come to 